This is the Utah film as it was originally photographed. The image structure and maneuvers definitely eliminate any kind of known aircraft. This is where Chief Photographer Newhouse, in his excitement, changed exposure. He believed that by changing density and giving the film more contrast, he could clarify the objects. The single object that reversed its course. The bounce is due to handheld camera. Now we study the action of one section of the film. We stop the action. We move in. Within a five mile range, aircraft could be determined. In excess of five miles, the speeds are greater than aircraft can achieve, except in straight line speed runs. The movement here follows an elliptical or circular pattern. Microscopic examination reveals that the objects are well focused. Their size varies from one-sixth to one-tenth the size of the moon as it appears to the naked eye. Their form is circular and sometimes elliptical. This fits the commonly used flying saucer description. Observe the object in the upper left corner. We move in to study the action. The object upper left will go out of frame on widescreen projection. Observe the motion of the two objects, upper right, as we rock them back and forth. Now we move over and up on the frame to make a closer study of the object in the upper left corner. Examine this object closely. Compare it with those objects you saw in the Montana film. These films were taken approximately two years apart, hundreds of miles apart. We drop back to the original perspective and resume. Now the section of the film where photographer Newhouse changed exposure. Weather conditions together with the persistence and motion of the formations eliminate the possibility of atmospheric mirages. Photogrammetric experiments have shown that the images cannot be associated with any kind of birds at any distance. Stop. Now forward again. Stop. We drop back to original perspective. Now once again, and for the last time, the Utah film. The objects cannot be associated with any known balloon observations. The exact date of the sighting was July 2nd at 11 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. I was driving on U.S. Highway 30 South with my wife and our son Delbert and our daughter Ann. We were on our way from Washington, D.C. to Portland, Oregon on vacation before reporting to my new duty station at the Aviation Supply Depot, Naval Supply Center, Oakland, California. About seven miles after we passed through Tremont, Utah, my wife noticed a group of objects in the sky which she could not identify. I pulled over to the side of the road, stopped, got out, looked up and saw the objects. There were about 12 of them in a rough formation proceeding in a westerly direction. They were like nothing I'd ever seen before, although I've logged some 2,000 hours in the air. They were identical in appearance. How would you describe these objects? Like two saucers, one inverted over the other. I had no means of judging the altitude, it appeared to me to be about the size of B-29s at 10,000 feet. Did you photograph them immediately? I watched the objects for a few moments before getting my camera out of the suitcase. Then I lost more time getting film out of the second suitcase and loading the camera. When I first saw the objects, they were almost overhead. 
By the time I had the camera ready to go, they had moved to a considerably greater distance. What kind of a camera did you use? A 16 millimeter Bell and Howell, a film auto load master with the three lens turret. I selected a three inch lens and set it on F8 and focused at infinity. Did you think of using slow motion? No, the camera was set on 16 frames per second and in the excitement of the moment, I didn't think to shoot at a greater rate, although that would have improved the coverage. I centered the viewfinder on the objects and made the first shot. Then I decided that if the sky were darker, the objects would show better. So I stopped the lens down to f16 and continued photographing. This proved to be a mistake as the quality of the film would have been better had I left it at f8. Did these objects remain together in a group at all times? No, toward the end, one object reversed its course and proceeded away from the uh, rest of the group. I held the camera still and allowed this single object to pass through the field of view, picking it up again later in its course. Did this single object return to the rest of the group? No, I allowed it to pass through the field of view of the camera two or three times and then it disappeared. In what direction? Over the eastern horizon. What did you do then? I turned, swinging the camera just in time to see the rest of the group disappear over the western horizon. What was the weather? The weather was bright and cloudless. Visibility good? The visibility was excellent. How does this film you shot compare with what you saw with your naked eye? You have studied the film. Yes, I've studied it. I'm very disappointed. The film falls far short of showing what I saw with the naked eye due to the delay in getting the camera started and my error in exposure. If I'd had this camera in the seat beside me, loaded and ready to go, there'd be no need for questions. The Air Force would have the answer. What is your full name, please? Delbert Clement Newhouse. And you are on active duty with the Navy? Yes, sir, I am. What is your official Navy rank? My title is Chief Photographer. I'm a commissioned warrant officer, United States Navy. How long have you been in the service? 21 years. Now, is there anything you can add to the description of these objects? They had a bright silvery color. Can you describe some particular detail? They had a metallic appearance. They seemed to be made of some kind of polished metal. 